Hello everyone, George here, and we are back again with my implementation of ToeJ Monero VR concept. Um, so what we've done so far is uh, we've kind of put together a rudimentary world with most of the pieces that matter. In the last video, we also created our body, um, our main camera, and the scripts that are necessary to move our body around using the touchpad on the device. Now it's probably a good idea for us to actually make it so that something happens when we uh, select or interact with these different present objects. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and, and create the underlying systems necessary to make these work. Now, we're not going to spend a bunch of time dealing with the transitions of opening a present up, seeing what's inside, and then um, having something happen. We'll come back and flesh those concepts out. Instead, we're just going to get this functionality put together as fast as possible in this video so that we can move forward with what we're actually doing. That being said, uh, one of the presents is food, and one of the things we're going to need for our character are health, XP, and money. So we might as well go ahead and create that class. So why don't we go ahead and create a C-sharp script and just call this character. And inside of character, we're going to go ahead and add those different properties. Now, character is probably also going to work for the enemies that we eventually need to create as well. So we'll see exactly what happens. All right, so here we go. We have character. Let's go ahead and create those couple different properties. We'll do a uh, you know what, instead of a float, let's do an int health, which we're going to start with, let's just say 100, and then int um, XP or experience points is going to be equal to zero, and then int money is going to be equal to, now in the new game, it's a floating point value where you actually have cents. I think we're just going to stick to standard money in the new game, and we're just going to say you have none. All right, so now this could be a struct and not inherit from mono behavior if we wanted to. I'm not exactly sure how I want this to work yet. So let's just create some methods to access these different components here. So let's see, I should be able to right click, quick actions and refactorings. Can we do, so maybe we want to do something like um, add money or spend money. Uh, so public void spend money and then public void add money and then this of course should be an int money and then this is this dot money plus equals money and spend money will also be similar I mean technically we could use add money for both but why not do one for positive and one for negative so then we'll do um, and this should be a bool value I think So if um, this dot money is greater than or equal to money, then we can say return true, and we'll do this dot money minus equals money. Otherwise, else return false. You are not allowed to spend the money. In this case, add money is fine. Uh, then we have experience points. Once again, just public void add experience. I don't think we'll ever make it so that you lose experience points. So that's fine. And then we'll just do plus equals experience points. And then what's left? Health. So health is going to be a little bit more interesting. So there probably should be uh, public void take damage, I'm guessing. And I don't know yet how the combat system is going to work, so we're, we're just going to make this method real quick. So we'll do int um, damage, and then if uh, damage is greater than or equal to health, then we also need to die. So we might want to make a flag bool is dead is equal to false and then we'll do uh, is dead is equal to true and we'll do damage or health is dot health minus equals damage well actually no we just need this dot health equals zero and then is dead is equal to true else it's going to be uh, this dot health minus equals damage 
And that should be it. And then, of course, this is where some kind of animation should play and whatnot. But we're going to, once again, we're stripping this game down to its bare fundamentals before we move on to adding those more interesting features. So let's just leave it as is. Okay, so that's that. Um, so we have a concept now of health, money, and XP. We just need to implement it somehow. And that's going to be partly due in the presence that we generate. Once again, we're just winging this. I haven't really spent any time thinking about it. Let's create another C-sharp script and at least just let's call this presence for right now. And I'm just going to create, we're going to get rid of all this for now. And let's just do a public enum presence or present types. How about that? Or actually, you know, we can probably we pull this out of here and do a, I mean, we should maybe put it under a namespace or maybe not. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just do present types and then we'll have uh, spring shoes, uh, rocket skates, let's see, rain, tomatoes, Icarus wings, and food. And food should be technically two different things. It should be a uh, fudge sundae. There we go. Okay, so that's this stuff. So the character now, let's just say, let's just create a function that's going to take in a present. So public void um, use present. And that's going to take in one of these enums. So we'll do present types, present type. And then we'll do a switch statement in here, which will just be on the present type that we were passed. Let's actually do this. And then we'll do a case dot foot Sunday break case present types dot Icarus wings break in case present types dot brain tomatoes break case present types dot rock escapes case dot spring shoes okay once again, not 100% sure, this is definitely not the long-term way of handling this, but for right now, it's gonna be fine for what we have to do. So with Fudge Sunday, we're going to want to, so we have take damage, we're also gonna want a public void heal, I guess. And it's health. If health is greater than or equal to this dot health, then we should probably make another variable. So we have health itself, but then we want to have a maximum health. Int max health is equal to, and we'll just say that's also 100 is equal to health. Or no, well, health should be equal to max health. So let's do this. Uh-oh. Am I allowed to do this? I think because it's not a constant, I can't do that, can I? So we're just going to do this. Actually, what we should be doing is in the start method, um, void start, just doing health is equal to max health. Okay. And we don't have health. So let's do int health, just that, is equal to zero. And max health is equal to that. Then we come back down here. If health is greater than or equal to this dot max health, then uh, health is going to be equal to this dot max health. Else, we're going to have uh, this dot health is going to be equal to this dot health is going to be equal to uh, plus equals health. Health. Oh, 
Okay, so that's how to heal. So when we eat our food, all we gotta do is come over here and do a heal. And then a fudge sundae, let's just say that heals 20 points of health. Once again, we'll probably be moving these things into their own class eventually, but for right now, this is gonna be fine. Now we've gotta deal with the rest of these things. So we've got Icarus wings, raining tomatoes, rocket skates, and spring shoes. Um, each of these are gonna modify the game in a much more global way than just health. So Icarus Wings, for instance, I'm guessing will allow you when you press a button to kind of fly upwards. So I think we're going to add our update method back. And then what we'll probably do is bring this switch statement into play. And inside of here, some of these don't matter. Uh, Fudge Sunday can go away. Now we, we need to know our current state. So let's just make a um, present, or present types dot uh, present state. And actually under present types, we're gonna add a new one called none. And we're gonna set that equal to present types dot none. And then under present state, when we use a present, we're gonna change our state to whatever that present happens to be in some cases. Now, in the case of this, uh, we're not going to for the fudge Sunday because that's an instantaneous effect. But for the rest of these, we are going to change our state to whatever that state happens to be. And I don't have to do it this way. Technically, I could just be using the value that gets passed in. Um, I do see that, but you know what? It's fine for right now. So then we have our present type where really what that should be is present state. And if our present state is one of these, oh, we're going to handle the logic a little bit differently. So for instance, with rain tomatoes, we're going to need functionality for raining down tomatoes. Uh, for right now, we're just going to create a sphere, I think. And then let's create 3D object sphere, frame one up on that. Let's see how big that is. That's pretty huge since it's a meter by a meter. Let's turn grid snapping off for a second here. And let's shrink this down and maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Oh, numlock is not on. 0 0.5. That's a better size for a tomato. And actually, I'm gonna, let's squash it a little bit in one direction. There we go. And why don't we go ahead and do we wanna add a material to it or do we just wanna wait? Let's just wait, uh, no reason to mess things up. So let's call this a tomato, tomato, and let's go to our prefabs and just drag that in there. Now let's reset some of the stuff on this. So let's do zero, 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 and the scale's fine. That's all good too. And now that we have our tomato, I guess we can add the prefab into this class for now. Once again, this stuff is probably all going to get separated out eventually, but for right now, since we're just doing this proof of concept, it's just easier for us to keep everything together um, and not think too much about the overall global logic of how things are going to be working. Um, better to just get it working and then we can make things work better and more efficiently in the future. So rain tomatoes. So let's do a game object uh, and I like to do prefab underscore and then we'll do tomatoes great and we need to make this a serialized field and then now we need the actual code to make raining tomatoes work so let's create a new function and we'll just do void uh, yeah void rain tomatoes now this should be an I enumerator probably so actually let's, whoops, let's make a few changes here. I enumerator like that. And this is gonna end up being a coroutine, which means we also need to save this somewhere. So we'll do a, a coroutine um, rain tomatoes is equal to null and then We'll come down here and then in this use present, we'll call this coroutine. 
So we'll do, yeah, rating tomatoes is equal to start coroutine. And then that's going to be rain tomatoes. And now in rain tomatoes, we need to just set up the functionality that's going to make this work. Um, a few things that we probably want are for raining tomatoes to be some sort of a radius around the player so they're not falling throughout the entire world. Because in Toe Jam and Earl, the original game, you only see an isolated component of the world. And it makes more sense for that to work here as well. The idea being that tomatoes are not going to rain all over the place and potentially destroy all the enemies in the entire world. Instead, they're just going to be localized around you and any enemies that happen to be near you as well. In which case, we're going to need a couple different values. So let's just define a radius for now. Float tomato radius is going to be equal to, let's just say, um, 8.0 meters. I even that, that seems kind of large, actually. So maybe do seven. Now we're going to need a random location within seven meters of the player. So we're going to need the main camera. So we're going to do um, camera camera dot main dot transform dot position. And what we want to do is is uh, create a vector that's randomly around it. So we can do a plus equals plus equals a new vector three, in which case, uh, let's make another one float H-E-I-G-H-T height to spawn. Let's say that starts 10 meters up. We won't make tomato clouds or you know what, we'll do 15 meters up. How about that? Height to spawn. So that's going to be our Y value. Now we just need our X and our Z value, in which case they're just going to be randomized values. We'll normalize the vector and then we'll multiply the vector by tomato radius. And we should work. We should, we should be fine at that point. So random dot value. Oh, this isn't going to work, actually. So let's, let's just do this. So we have the random value there between the two of them. Then we can do a let's yeah we're gonna we're gonna take a second to do some math here. Um, spawn location is gonna be equal to this stuff right here. Then we're going to spawn location dot normalize. Normalize that vector. Now let's see, is that a method? Yes, okay. So the vector has been normalized. Now we want spawn location dot uh, times equal tomato radius. So wait, hold on. Is this uh, is random dot value between zero and so we actually want this value to be minus 0.5f and minus 0.5f. So it's all around you. And then we normalize that value. So that's some ve vector pointing around you. And then we're going to multiply that by the tomato radius to scale it up to size after it's been normalized. And then we're going to uh, dot y is equal to height to spawn. OK, so with that, we now have a two dimensional radius around the object. And then we are uh, then placing it afterwards a certain height above it. And all we need to do now is camera.main.transform.position is where it's we're going to be spawning this thing plus um, spawn location. And we need this to be, we need to instantiate the thing. So why don't we do that really fast? So instantiate, and then we want that to be what? Prefab tomatoes, or tomato, really, this should be called. Do I have an E on the end? Tomato. There we go. Yeah. So let's go back and fix that spelling error really fast. Tomato. And instantiate tomato. And then its location is not a transform, but instead we're going to be doing a vector three, uh, which is going to be this right here. And quaternion dot identity. Okay, 
So we do need to set up our prefab a little bit more because right now it's not going to fall. So let's go ahead and dive into our tomato prefab for a second here. So prefabs, tomatoes. So it's got a sphere collider, but we do need a rigid body on it. Using, using gravity is great. Let's do continuous and that should work. Okay, that's fine. We're also going to need a script on tomato so that when it hits something, it's going to apply damage to it. So we can go ahead under scripts now. Now let's see, we have a lot of scripts under here that have nothing to do with the vibe. So let's move these out. See so character movement and there's character. Character is going to come out of vibe. This is all vibe centric stuff. So we're going to leave that there. So we have character and then we're probably going to want a new C sharp script just for tomato. Okay, in which case this is going to need an on collision enter and we're probably going to want an int damage is going to be equal to, let's say this deals 10 damage. Why not? That's probably pretty low given that we have to start. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. We can always figure that out later. Not important. So um, if uh, collision dot, let's see. Game object dot ta uh, compare tag. Let's let's say there's going to be a tag called enemy. Is what we'll make in just a second. Then we'll do get component. So collision dot game object dot get component, and then we'll make a component called enemy in just a second as well. And then we'll do temp enemy or enemy temp is equal to that, and then temp dot take damage. And then that's going to be equal to whatever our damage amount actually is. Okay, so we need a new class now called enemy. All right, so that's enemy. And then it needs a public void take damage. And that's going to be an int. And then this class is also going to have stuff similar. So there's character movement. Where's character? Let's open that back up. So we want at least these two in enemy. So let's paste them over. And then we want, we have add money, we have health, and we have take damage. Let's grab those two methods and give them to enemy as well. And is dead uh, needs to be here too. We're gonna need that. Not sure what it's gonna do yet, but it's a good flag to have for the future. So, okay, we have health, we have take damage. We have start and we have update. I think that's about it. In update, we could check to see whether or not we're damaged and then kill ourselves. Uh, I'm not sure. Obviously, eventually we'll need an animation that does all that kind of cool stuff. But in the beginning, it doesn't really matter. So why don't we do a if is dead. So we're just going to uh, destroy this dot game object. OK. And we need start method to set our health equal to max health. All right. Now that's pretty high for an enemy. I'm going to do like maybe 20 to start with. And then we'll probably create subclasses of this. In which case, if we're going to do that, we should probably do a, uh, a virtual method here for these so that they can be overridden. Yeah. Same thing with these two. We'll do virtual protected. All right. Okay, so with that, let's see, we have an error here. Rain tomatoes, not all code paths return a value. And that's because we don't actually wait to do anything. So we should probably have a float time between so tomatoes is equal to, let's say one second between each, nah, we want more than that. We're gonna want probably something like three, five seconds between. And then we probably also want a float uh, duration. It's gonna be equal to, and let's say that list lasts for 20 seconds. Okay, so then we'll do a while duration, while current, Time is is less than or equal to duration. 
we're going to be spawning tomatoes. Oh, and that's another thing. In tomato, we want on this, when, when, when this happens, we also want to destroy this dot game object. All right, so going back over here to our character, while current time is greater than duration, so we also want a float current time is equal to 0 0.0f. Uh, current time, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's do current time plus equals time dot delta time. And this happens. And then we'll, we're going to do a yield return new wait for seconds. In which case we're going to wait for time between tomatoes before the next one happens. Now I'm trying to think. So this is going to yield and wait. So I could wait for two seconds and then the next one happens, but we haven't updated the time yet. So that almost makes me think that we should be doing this. That way we wait, the time gets updated, and then we check to see what the duration actually is. So I like that a lot better. So that's Rain Tomatoes. In update, Rain Tomatoes should do nothing because the coroutine automatically gets created and it will destroy itself when it's necessary to do that. Now the only way that Rain Tomatoes um, should maybe get turned off is whether or not we allow the player to have multiple presents. Uh, at the moment we're going to allow them to do that except for things like spring shoes or rocket skates, which it makes no sense to have multiples in, in Icarus wings. These ones should be mutually exclusive, but something like to rain tomatoes, I feel should be able to happen at the same time as you wearing these other gifts as well. And the way I see it is that these gifts are probably going to be modifying the character movement script over here by injecting in um, vectors of movement that are beyond the ones that you choose or these are going to cause a state machine over here to change how it's going to be working. Um, and we'll see how that kind of works. I'm not exactly, I'm not hundred percent sure yet. We got to get to that. But anyway, um, we're at the 30 minute mark for this video. So I'm going to take a quick moment and stop this and start it back up again, just to keep my system resources free. I'll see you all next time. So long and goodbye. Hi everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, remember to subscribe and hit the bell. If you want notifications about new videos, I upload. And if you'd like to help even more, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon account. Links, as always, are in the description. See you next time. So long, goodbye.